الحمد لله نحمده تبارك وتعالى ونصلي على جميع أنبيائه ورسله ونستفتح بالذي هو خير سبحانك ربنا لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا نعوذ بك اللهم من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Oh, you believe? Fear Allah the way he should be feared Be cautious, conscious, alert, aware of your Lord and then take charge of your life so that you die as a Muslim dear brothers and sisters in Islam the title is how to win the race against time as we know Years after years, months after months, is just going. And we have no say. We have no control. We have no means to modify the pace and the speed of the time that is running. We are subjected to follow it to race, to compete, so that we become winner in the hereafter. You know, and all of us mostly know, there is a big lie. That lie said, time management. How you manage time? Who? Who are you? Do you tell the sun, go up and down, slow down? Extend the day, extend, extend the 24 hours, extend the year. No one absolutely can manage time. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who manages the time. And he created the, the whole universe. Designed the way he said, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah itna ashara shahra. في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم The number of months for us here on earth are twelve This was the design of the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The day he created heaven and earth And he assigned four among them to be sacred month and we are in the month of Muharram which is one of the four sacred months so what you can do you can manage yourself but you cannot manage time you can manage your habits your tasks your goal you can defer eliminate destruction you can be aware alert and you can be greedy on the spending of the time that's all what you can do but the clock is not going to wait the sun is not going to wait the rotation of earth is not going to wait the moon is gonna run is not going to wait for any for any of us and allah said 
إذا جاء أجلهم فلا يستقدمون ساعة ولا يستأخرون If the term is over, there is no way you can extend it, you can delay it, you can modify it, you can excuse yourself from it. There is none. It is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us, the time taking us away from this life to the second life. So the time running means one thing, that time to depart is coming closer. It's not time to vanish. It's not time to be not existent. It is time to depart through death into the other life, into the other phase of our life, into the eternal life, into the, the, the future one that we have designed for ourselves in the hereafter. So, with that in mind, let's see how we can raise. Allah said, Sabiqu ila maghfira. Raise and compete to a forgiveness of Allah. And said, Sari'u means two things. Sabiq means compete and run the race. Race against time, but you are racing with your community, with the righteous people, with the scholars, with the hafiz, with the believer, with the mu'mins, with those who preach Quran, those who teach Quran, those who attend the Quran, those who are in Jum'ah, in Salah, in Fajr, in Isha, you are supposed to compete with them and to be among as-sabiqoon al awwalun to be the first of all these good things. But also, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَسَارِعُوا You might find nobody competing with you. People are slow. People are unaware. People, people are heedless. They do not think of time rightly. So what Allah said, don't go the same speed. If they slow, you are not supposed to slow. What he said, Sari'u. Increase your speed. Mean build momentum. Today I prayed four prayers in Jama'ah. My goal tomorrow or next week to pray all of them. Today I read a page of the Quran. My intention, my goal, my task, my challenge next time to read two or three. So, Sari'u, if no one is competing, and it is today common things, people basically slowing down, going to the masjid. Look, they're going to come to the Jum'ah at the Salah, khutbah. It's okay you listen or not. So, people now, the attitude of competing as the Sahaba used to is going down. But Allah said that's not an excuse. You have to build your own momentum. And you know what does mean momentum? Every minute, every hour, every day, the speed is getting higher and higher and higher. So, how we are going to win? As we said, either we compete, and if competitors are very slow, you can win all the time. Don't be heedless and take it easy. Time is sharp. Time is set pace to run. Time is your commodity. Time is your life. Time is your chance to build a bright future for yourself in this life and the hereafter. What are you going to do over there? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna nahnu naktubu ma qaddamu wa atharahu. You are going to see in your next life, when your time here is over, you are going to see two things. One that you already advanced. Qaddamu. Naktubu ma qaddamu. So salah, siyam, zakah, hajj, charity, morals, ethics, kindness, compassion, all of this, you are going to see it there. And it's going to be given to you, awarded to you, and rewarded to you. 
but also you are going to see another thing. The things that are good left behind. Atharihim. What you have done in this life as good, as beneficial, is still is going to see the reward of it there. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُو لَهُ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهِ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ This is hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when my time is over here, I have departed, I am in the second life, I can't do anything anymore. This is the place where you can do. You have the chance, you are told, you are called upon to do. Once departure is there, there is no way you can do anything. That is only to receive, to enjoy what you have saved, what you have invested, what you have as advanced for yourself. So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you depart, your work, your deed, your opportunity to do actions is going to be stopped, except from three things. Still, you are going to be doing it. You are already dying. You are already in the second life, but still you are going to receive the reward of it. Number one, wallet, son, or a daughter that are righteous and they pray for you. Righteous. We're going to talk about this righteousness. What does it mean? Praying for me, I know. What is it? They keep me in their tongue and their mind and they're feeling all the time, so they pray for me. They ask Allah to raise you my rank in Jannah and to be pleased with me and to bring me in the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. That is known. But if he is righteous, what does it mean? Righteousness. What is the opposite of righteousness? Is fasad, corrupt, immoral. Anything that is fasad, Corrupt, immoral, hurts the others. So salih means benefiting others. So he is the daughter or the son that are righteous, benefiting others and benefiting me by making dua. That's one. Number two, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sadaqa jariya, continuous charity, masjid, Road, hospital, drinking water, which is now in desperate need around the whole world. That is sadaqa jariya. And then ilmun yuntafa'u bih, beneficial knowledge. And you know what? You can have them all. If you have a son or a daughter that are righteous and they have the beneficial knowledge, and they established continuous charity, you get them all together in one. So what this hadith is saying, that you really can win the race against time. Your time is over, but you're still receiving, you're still growing, you're still climbing the levels of Jannah while it is already over for you. So let's take example of that. And the example is Zakaria. He's a prophet of Allah. And I'll quickly go through his story. He was definitely, clearly in race against time. What he said, صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا Zakaria is the one that have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 83 years sin free. Never was in any violation to any commands of Allah. Though with all this good deed, with all this long life with righteousness, only the mercy of Allah commemorate him. 
ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا. Me and you, we cannot do like what he did. 83 years, sin free we can't. So we have to rely on his mercy. We have to acquire his mercy so that we can be winner in this life and the hereafter. And then what happened to Zakaria? Zakaria nada rabbahu nida an khafiya called upon Allah in secrecy. And what the word nada is not da'a. He didn't pray. He called. Why? Because he's running out of time. And always when you are running out of time, you scream. When you have plenty of time, you talk nicely, slowly. Because you know you have time. So, Nada Rabbahu Nida and Khafiya, dear brothers and sisters Islam, the cushion that you can fall and be saved is the secret prayers, the secret salah, secret sadaqah, secret standing at the night between you only and Allah. And that's what he did, Khafiya. He kept that secret between him and Allah alone. Express that only in secrecy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the cushion. If you are sincere and you have many things that are good and you did them in secrecy, they will come to rescue anytime, anywhere, in this life and the hereafter. And we know from the hadith that where the people were stuck in the cave, they called upon Allah. We have done these little things. In secrecy with sincerity. Open for us. Allah said, I will open for you. Now, Nida and Khafiya, the hadith said, those Allah will be shared in the day of judgment. A man or a woman remembered Allah in secrecy and the tears went down on their cheeks. It's not to show up. This person, he or she, are going to be in the shade of Allah in the day of judgment. So, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا Number one, and this is a practical lesson to us. Number one, express your conditions. As he said, وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي My bones getting thin and weak. Who is among us will not go through the same thing? Who? All of us. The day will come where the bones can sustain us. We have to have a cane. We have to have a chair. We have to pray setting. We cannot move. We cannot walk. Everyone will go through this. And Allah said, وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ If Allah extend your life, He said, I am going to lower the quality of your life. If I'm going to let you live longer, it is imminent. I am going to lower the quality of your life. You need this, you need hearing aid, you need glasses, you need magnificent. Fine glasses, you need so many things. Allah said, just to remind you that you need to appreciate it. When you are young, when you are using your body with no thinking, you jump, you race, you go and play games and ball and you kick and all of this, you never appreciate the strength of your bones. The time will come to remind you out of his mercy. Zachariah said, وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي Second, وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا The hair turns gray. And you know, every one of us have so many different hairs, but once you get old, all these colors of our hairs is going to turn gray. Whether it is green or black or blonde or curly, whatever is going to turn gray. وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا that's his conditions. And then what he said, وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّي شَقِيَّ He said, I am lucky. 
I never have my dua be not answered. Sakia, my sincerity, my prayers to you, to do to you, remove hardship in my life. Answer what he's saying. He's saying I'm used to this from you, and now I have a request. Expect the same. A amal, hope. That his prayer is going to go through, is going to go straight. That's number two. Number three, what he said. What is your concern? He said, My problem, my worry, my concern. Who's going to carry the message after me? Who? If I die, they're going to be lost. And they were living in bad conditions, just like ours. If, you are, if we don't stick together, be in the masjid with the righteous people, with the good community, we're going to get lost. And many, many of us already got lost. So he said, Dear brothers and sisters of Islam, what's your concern? What is your concern? And be honest and be sincere and be serious. Time is ticking. 1444 Hijri. This is Muharram. And it's going to go so fast. You can see your kids how they grow so fast. So what is your worry? I don't have enough money. I don't have enough cars. I'm not able to do that and that. Or you are worried about the Quran. Where is going to go? Salah, masjid, poor and needy, my children, family, my community, my ummah, my brothers and sisters in humanity. Do you have any grain, any amount, any ounce, any pound of concern about Mawali, those who are on the same faith that I do. Do you have concern? That's what he said. I'm getting old. I see the end in the horizons. I see the death is so close. I have been lucky to ask you when you give me. But I am right now getting into worried about those faithful community and followers and family. What is going to happen to them when I die? And also the fourth one, he said, There is an obstacle for me to generate righteous children so they can continue and carry the legacy of mine. What? Then he stated what he want. Dear brothers, this is a practical lesson. You have to explain your conditions. You have to present the hope in Allah. You have to express your concern. Then you have to ask what you need. This is exactly what he did. فهب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب. Give me this. What do you ask? Oh Allah, give me whatever you want. No. You have to know what you want. What is the problem? What is the concern? What do you want to change? You have to specify as he said. هب لي. He didn't say give me son. ذرية. Children is that selfish. Give me from you someone who is carrying the faith and the iman, loyal and believer and sincere to carry the inheritance I have, the message, and to carry from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then, Yeah, we have a children, but are they really? Pleasing to Allah, pleasing to us, doing the role they're supposed to do toward the mawali, 
toward the rest of the community. This is a practical lesson that we need to follow and we need to consider ourselves always we are in race against time. And that is Zechariah, but all the prophets and messengers went through the same thing. Again, to summarize, four things to win the race against time. Explain to him your conditions. Present the hope in him. Precisely express your concern. And it gets to be not selfish. And then ask specifically what you need. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you can win the race against time and why just win through real example. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, والباقيات الصالحات. Righteous deeds are going to last, to overlast you. And you are going to receive retirement and bonuses and benefits and return from this eternal investment. You do it, you are, you are the one. And the hadith we started. This is clear statement from the Prophet how to win the race against time. I'm not bound and limited to my age and how much I can do and how much I missed, and I regret so much. You are not limited. You can go beyond your time. You can depart, but he's still doing good things and is coming to you. A concern of the well-being of the believers, of the mu'mineen, of this deen, of those who are in loss. Those who think Allah is three and one and male and female and family, what is going to happen to them? Do you really care that you want to save them? And that is, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ in summary, dear brothers and sisters of Islam, you can win the race against time by making your legacy here. But this legacy has to be scalable. Just Walad Saleh, a daughter or a son righteous, they benefit many and their offsprings and their as Ibrahim alayhi salatu was did. So it's got to be scalable. It's not $10 in the box and go. That is not going to be scalable. Righteous, a son or a daughter, have beneficial knowledge doing a char continuous charity. This is how you can win the race. But also, in addition to that, you can raise, you can raise good family. And dear brothers and sisters Islam, because of the time limitation, we are falling short of what we're supposed to do in dealing and treating our women. I'm saying because the woman carried the man. The man didn't carry anything. We must empower them, teach them the deen, the manners, we need to generate a scholar's woman. We, if we do not change in this regard, if we marginalize our sisters, our daughters, our wives, our mothers, our women community, we are not going to go anywhere. We know Ibrahim, uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, his message started with three women. The wife of Fir'aun, his sister, and his mother. Though his brother Harun was there, he couldn't do anything and he's not part of it. We know the Islam was based on the effort of woman with her son called Hagar. 
We know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the support of Khadija he, he got, it was inspiring and empowering to him to, re, to, to spread the message to us. Dear brothers and sisters of Islam, Muslims have ignored women from teaching them the deen, the Quran, the manners, empowering them to be a righteous leader, a righteous scholar, to lead our kids and our family and our community. That is another topic, but this is one of them will enable us to win the time. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم إنا نسألك وأنت خير مسؤول أن تردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا وأن لا تجعل للشيطان علينا كيدا ولا سبيلا اللهم إنا نسألك أن تبرم لأمة الإسلام أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل الطاعة ويذل فيه أهل المعصية يؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر اللهم ول علينا هنا خيارنا واصرف عنا شرارنا اجعل ولايتنا في من خافك واتقاك واتبع رضاك يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة